Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's PJ. And we are on the left coast out here in Oakland, California. Uh, the first of two visits we're going to make out here this season. And it's the first time we're playing against the California Gold Coats. Um, and then we'll play them again back in Phoenix a little bit later on. Then we'll be back out here to play the Outlaws as well. But uh, the Gold Coats, I believe they're leading their division, aren't they? I believe so. Let's get over to the season standings. The Gold Coats are leading. They are in first place in the Seafarer Division with a record of 15 and 9. They hold a half game lead over the Overdogs, who are at 14 and 9. Although the Gold Coats with a plus 17 run differential, run differential, and the Overdogs with a plus 37. So that's a tenuous lead that the Gold Coats have oh, right yeah. now. The two California teams on the top. Uh, there's a couple, a couple, just there's a few names, three names that we could tell you about uh, that are um, that are new to the team this season that we didn't see last season. The first one, Jacques Ten. We knew he he's been playing for the Buzzards a mighty long time. <clears throat> the 37 year old catcher is now here making 9.6 million dollars a year to play in Oakland, and uh, I mean his batting average looks like he's he's slumping. He's never had a great batting average. A 207. He's at 194 this season. Um, he's played well against us, I think. Uh, I think so. I think, yeah, I think it's, he's had a pretty good bat against us. Um, other um, than but yeah, you look at that, you know, last season, uh, hitting a paltry 148. No wonder the Wizards parted ways with him. Yeah, yeah. Especially well, making 9.6 million. Yeah, well, he's a starting, I think he's a starting catcher. Oh, it's Cheval. They might put Cheval Stewart in there. He's making 7.3. Other than that, uh, in the line, to get a backup there. Montonio Levo, they picked him up from the Detroit Heaters last season, and uh, he's doing great here. He's actually hitting 327 now with 20, RBI, 20 RBIs. Six home runs. Yeah, we got we to gotta keep an eye out for Montonio Levo. He, he needed to move to the West Coast. Montonio Levo. Yeah. Now they got him on the bench. Yeah, I know. And then Oops. down there and pitching... The other name, Binky Stevens. Binky played uh, in the for the Nemesis for several years. Came here, and he's doing better here as well. He's got a 1.113 whip. Uh, his ERA is lower than it's ever been at 4.80. He's 2-0 on the season. So 14 Ks. Winning percentage, he's, he's winning 1,000. So B minus rank, 3.8 $3 million dollar relief pitcher. So that's that's what's new with this team. Before we go to um, on over to uh, our, our game stats for today, I'll tell you a little bit about the last game. It was another real close game. What a great game between two really solid teams, the Beagles at the um, at the Fort Lauderdale Freebooters. And I thought it'd be a, a low-scoring game, and it was. The Beagles started it off in the top of the second when Magic Moore, with one out, gets a soft looper just over the mound. It's an RBI single as Green to third. More ends up making it to first. The people score first. Then the bottom of the third, Jermaine Reigns comes up with no outs and hits one in a center field. It's a huge home run off the top of the screen um, and tying the game up with the putting the uh, the freebooters on the board there. And then we're thinking, okay, that's a, that's just in the third inning. And then nothing happens for quite a long time until the top of the sixth when Bertha Banks comes up with one out. She makes a bunt that looping over she can't quite pick up. She misses it, throws to first, doesn't even get her. The, the RBI comes in, the B-Wolves are ahead 2-1, to one, and that's how the game ends. It's a 2-1 to one win, and against the hottest, against, we're the hottest team in the league, but against the, the team with the best record, so what a game that was. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, it, that's the one thing that you we, we talked about, is that B-Wolves, between their pitching and their defense, are really kind of taking the bat out of the hands of the teams that they're facing off against. Um, while the and that's been good because the B Wolf offense really has not been very good over this stretch. So as Tommy pointed out, they're one of the hottest teams in the league, but not offensively. They're not, they're not yeah. one of the most offensive teams in the league. But uh, luckily, their pitching and their their fielding is uh, is kind of bailing them out. So well, there's... it's been working for them. Yep. There's been 12 other games to uh, since then and now, so why don't you tell us how that goes? Pete, start off with the Burners with the Herbisaurs out in uh, Seattle, and tell us how that went, because that's a good one we want to hear. 
All right, the burners take it on the herbicers. Herbicers jump out to an early lead, but the burners roar back and take it 8-2. to two. Hot corners were at the Moose in Michigan. It was all hot corners to start and end 14 to nothing. Holy cow, Crocs travel to Philadelphia to take on the Freedom. And it's a back-and-forth battle, and the Freedom hold court and win 5-4 and 10. The saw teeth at the water bolts, it was a water bolts win 5-4. Buzzards take it on the overdogs, and the buzzards jump out early and hold and win 10-3. Outlaws at the Warblers in Colorado. It's Outlaws to start, Outlaws to finish, 5-2. Wild Pigs taking on the Freedom, and the Wild Pigs showing some muscle. Take that one, 12-1, Tommy. I think it was 5 Crocs at the Arctics, Crocs, 5-2. Heaters taking on the Wide Loads, and it's the Heaters early. The Wide Loads come back, but the Heaters are going to take it in the end, 9-4. Okay, the Heaters next. Planet Pie at the Sandcats in Phoenix, and the Planet Pie take it 5-2. Blowfish traveled to take on the Sirloins. It's a back and forth battle. The Sirloins take it 3 2 in the end. Jacks and the Grapplers, Jacks won nothing. So we got a little help there. Herbisaurs got beat. They did. We got, yeah, we're tied. Okay, we'll go ahead and go ahead and start off with the Pioneer Conference. All right. I'd rather start in the trade division. But anyway, Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, the Burners sit atop the Pathfinder with a record of 15 and 9. They have a plus 41 run differential. The Crocodons are in second place with a record of 13 and 12, and they're two and a half games out. And down in the Uncharted Division, it's the 16 and 9 Platypi who are in first place. They are one half game ahead of the Oakland Outlaws, the other Oakland team here, who is 15 and 9, just like us, uh, and they got a plus 34 run differential. That's huge. Yes, sir. Down in the Journey Division, the Freebooters, with a record of 17 and 7. Seven losses, Tom. I don't know how they're going to make it with that many losses. 17 and 7, plus 46 run differential. I think that's still the best in the league. Um, they have a seven game lead over the second place Arctics, who are uh, sitting in second place with a record of 10 and 14. Wow, yeah. I think the Freebooters got that division wrapped up. <laughs> In our conference, the Explore Conference Seafair Division, this team, the Gold Coats, are in first place. They have the same record we do now. They're 15 and 9, but they have a full game lead over the Santa Monica Overdogs, who are 14 and 10, with a plus 30 run differential. In our very own trade division, the Herbisaurs and the Bee Wolves are locked up in first place, both of them with records of 5 and 9. They have a two game lead over the second place, Water Bullets, who are sitting there with a record of 13 and 11. And to finish things up in the Curiosity Division, it's the San Jose Sawteeth are 15 and 9, like so many other teams, in first place with a plus 24 run differential. They have got a three and a half game lead against the New York Wide Loads, who are not yet at 500. They're 12 and 13 on the season. Taking a look there, you look at the poor Nemesis. Uh, Four and 20 on the season. They are 11 games out of first place with a league leading negative 59 run differential. Uh, just awful. holy they cow yeah rebuild but who's gonna take players from that team all right that brings us to today's game it's regular season game 25 of 44 the b wolves are facing the gold coats rotation aces known for the rotation but they got great defense good speed and bullpen and contact as well so they are they're legit and both teams have a 15 and 9 record so this is a battle this is a battle of two first place teams this makes it on prime time and speaking yes, of sir. prime time, we're going to put our starting star out there on the mound. The only star on the team right now, the, oh no, it's one of two, uh, Hurley Bender, the right-hander. Hurley Bender's leading the league in strikeouts. He's known for his crazy junk and his accuracy. He's also uh, throws it harder than average. He's 2-2 two and two on the season with a 5.4 ERA and a 1.44 whip, so he's looking to advance his record to a positive 3-2. Yes, sir. And backing him up will be uh, Hanley Dexteris, the superstar shortstop. He's on fire, but again, he's not 100% physically fit. He's got about average power. He's got very good ability to connect, very good speed on a base fast. He's hitting 481 with six home runs, and he's just been tearing the cover off the ball, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Buster Biggs out there in left field has got better than average power, about average contact, and uh, better than average speed. He's in 265 with four home runs. And then Sturdy Woodman over there at first base with uh, a little bit better than average power, good ability to connect, but uh, less than average speed on the base pass. He's hitting 371 with four home runs. Caesar Austin's going to start on the mound for the Gold Coats. He's a, the right hander for the, for the Gold Coats. He's known mostly for his accuracy. He's really accurate, but he's also throws the ball harder than most as well. He's uh, pretty good with his junk to, to boot. So he's 2-3 and three on the season with a 1.60 ERA and a 0.94 whip. So he's looking to even up his record at three apiece. 
Uh, backing him up will be uh, Montonio Levo. Uh, Tommy talked about him a little bit. He is uh, he is uh, locked something in. else. <laughs> he is something else. Yeah, <laughs> he's locked in. Um, he's playing first base. He's got uh, he's got uh, better than average power, better than average ability to connect, but he's got poor speed. He's hitting three twenty seven though with six home runs. The locked in. Pineda in center field. He's got about average power. He's got good ability to connect and good speed on the base. He's in 221 with one home run. And then Jacques Offtan, <laughs> as Tommy talked about. He may not be, t- you know, he may not be one of the league leaders, but he seems to hit pretty well against the B Wolves. Jacques Offtan, the catcher, the uh, he's got good power. He's got less than average uh, ability to connect and, and maybe just a little bit better than average speed. But he's hitting a paltry 194 with one home run so far this season. He is both two of their notable players there uh, didn't play for this team last season, so that's interesting. You see, they pick up some some timely talent. Uh, we are getting the lineup from assistant coach. It looks like this. No big surprise. Handley Dexterous is going to start things off. Batting first. He's on fire, Pete. He's on fire. Yes, uh, he is. <clears throat> hopefully, he doesn't break an arm out there. He'll be playing in center field today for the slumping Magic War. So. Handley will play anywhere. Put him in, coach. Buster Biggs will bat second and play left field. Right behind him, batting third is Sturdy Woodman. He'll play first base behind the mount, behind the plate, catching Steve Montstewart today. He's going to play back clean and clean up. So he's coming in for the slumping Eliza Peck. Slumping and not a quite 100% physical Eliza Peck. Batting fifth, Freddie Knox is coming back to second base. So Freddie's shaking off the cobwebs. He's hoping to get back in here at the score hills. Bertha Banks will bat sixth and play third base at shortstop. Ham Slamis, again, getting to get some more time here on the field um, against the team that started off here in, in Oakland and then moved out to Colorado. Ham will play shortstop. In right field, <clears throat> we got Billy LeBoink, who's who's tense, unless we want to bring in Poke Foster. Let's get, yeah, we can give Poke a try. All right, so we got three tense players on, on the bench. Magic Moore, Eliza Peck, and Billy LeBoink. Poke Foster's going to start things off here in right field. Uh, and then you got Hurley Bender on the mound. He's going to bat ninth, and he's going to throw the forefinger, the two-finger, the cut-finger, the curveball, the slider. He's going to throw him well here at Sakura for the first time out here. Yes, sir. Beautiful Sakura, Sakura Hills. It is a beautiful ballpark to play in. I don't know if I've ever played here during the day. It always seems like a night game here in Oakland. Yeah. What you get do? Mount, Mount Fuji. Yes. The, uh, <laughs> the American the replica Mount Fuji, of Mount Fuji yeah, <laughs> out there. I can't tell you how many how much money the city paid for that, to that build replica. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the team could have that. Yeah. Going for the cold coach, you're gonna have Pineda leading off, playing center field. Salas in right field. Levo at first base. Jacques Dan catching Ballard in left field. Pennington playing shortstop. Delgado at second base. French at third, and Caesar Austin pitching. As the Gold Coats take the field, Hanley Dexterous, Buster Big, Sturdy Woodman will give take pick up some lumber, get ready to step into the box, and Caesar Austin's going to take the uh, bump with his 1.6 ERA. Wow! On a moonlit night. Yes, sir. Hanley Dexterous is on fire and well. He's a tough out utility player, hitting four oh, hitting 481, not 40. Oh. First one's in for a strike. This game's underway. Caesar Austin starts with a strike, goes with the ball. And he also has six home runs and 21 RBIs as well. Two quick balls, misses. Now he's behind 2-1. and Dexterous reaches down, fouls it off first base line. Two apiece. He's a K-man against a tough out. Hanley reaches down, hits a liner on the ground to French at third. He throws it over to first for that first out. One down and in steps the left fielder, Buster Biggs. He's neutral and fit in 265. Four home runs, seven RBIs, one out. In the top of the first. Fish, first pitch to Biggs is in there for a cold strike. Strike one. That one's fouled straight back. Strike two. And now Biggs is in the hole. 0 oh 2. Caesar Austin known as a K Man. <laughs> Biggs lifts that foul into the stands along the first baseline. That's lifted to Pennington at shortstop, and she's able to make the catch for the second out. So two quick outs and in steps Sturdy Woodman. I didn't realize how big this park is. It is a big park. There's a lot of, lot of seats here, a lot of fans. A lot of white in the stands today. I think it's mostly their team. So uh, Sturdy's 371, four home runs, 20 RBIs. We had a ball and then a strike. No, a strike and then a ball. Then he hits that one past the mound, but Pennington picks it up, shortstop, throws the first one, two, three. Yeah. 
They made him throw some pitches, though, and that's, that's going to be key for against Cesar Austin. Yeah. So as we go into the bottom of the first, Dunk Pineda, Carlito Salas, and Montonio Levo going to face Hurley Bender in his 5.4 ERA. Dunk Pineda, the center fielder, is locked in and fit. He's hitting 221 with a home run, eight RBIs. All right, Dunky. <laughs> Hurley Bender throws his first pitch. In there for called strike, strike one. Dunk Pineda, the center fielder. Takes the second pitch outside. Ball one. Count is even now. One ball, one strike. That one's fouled straight back. And now Pineda finds himself behind in the count. One and two. Bottom of the first. No score. That catches the outside corner of the plate for the first K for Hurley Bender. One down and in steps Carlito Salas, the right fielder. He's neutral and juiced. He's hitting zeros, though. He seems like this is his first at bat. First pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Salas with bad jumps. That's in there for called strike. And now the count is evened up. One ball, one strike with one out. Inside. That one's inside, ball two. Two balls and a strike. Base is empty for Salas. That's in there for called second strike. And now we've got an even count again at two and two. Carlito Salas, the right fielder. Swing and a miss, and Salas goes down on strikes. The second victim of Hurley Bender. He's getting things going early today, Tommy. Antonio Levo, the first baseman's locked in and fit, hit 327. Six home runs, 20 RBIs. First pitch is off the plate outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes with two outs. Bender going up against uh, the heart of the that's foul mm -hmm. ball. One ball, one strike, going up against uh, some of the the best hitters on the team, and so far he struck out two of them. That's fouled off, and now the count to Montonio Levo is one ball, two strikes with two outs. Levo behind in the count. And there's a roller that's going to get to Freddy Knox. He's going to pick it up, double pump, make the throw to Woodman for the third out. So trading, going back and forth, three up, three down. We're heading into the top of the second. Steve Monstour, Freddy Knox, and Bertha Banks going to face Caesar Austin, who threw 12 pitches. And his ERA is at 1.56. See if we can get something going here in the second. Steve Monstour, the catcher's neutral. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. He's hitting 250 with a home run and three RBIs. First pitch to Monstour's outside, ball one. Ooh, he broke his bat on that one, fouled it straight back. So the count is evened up one and one. That one's low ball two, two and one. Oh, Swing Steve. early. And Monstor's even the count up two and two. Cesar Austin a K man. That one's a roller right up the middle in the center field for a clean single. And Steve Monstor has gotten the first hit of the game. And Austin's mojo has gone down. So one on with no outs. All right, brings in Freddie Knox. Where do you go, Steve? Good to see him get back in. Freddie Knox in 29, one home run, three RBIs. Freddie or uh, Steve Monstor, not too much of a stealing threat. First pitch is high, ball one. Cesar Austin pulling it together here. Follows with a strike, or even a one apiece. 20th pitch by the K-Man, coming right now. High and inside, misses two and one the count. Pressure up here. The top of the second, no score still. That one's in there for a strike, two and two. Freddie making a pitch. See what he comes with here. Takes some time, delivers. It's a roller past the mound in the center field, just like that last one. Pineda picks it up to hold him up. The Beagle's got two quick hits with no outs. Yes, sir. Two on with no outs. Bertha Banks, the third baseman, steps in. She's neutral and fit in 282 with a home run, six RBIs. Austin up to 22 pitches in the second inning. First pitch gets us the outside corner for called strike. Strike one. Nope, outside. That one's outside, ball one. One ball, one strike to Bertha Banks. That's foul straight back. Now Bertha Banks is behind one and two. She bunts oh no. that, and that's going to get down on the ground. Sacrifice bunt for Bertha Banks. She moves the runners to second and third, but she was thrown out at first. So two on with one out. All right, got two runners in scoring position. He got Ham up hitting 355 with one long ball, one RBI. Oh, oh he no. pops that one up, and it's going to be shallow. He's not going to be able to run it in. Pineda picks it up and guns it in. And we have to hold up. Um, one, two down. Two outs now with runners at second and third. Pope Foster stepping in. He's hitting 357 with a home run, three RBI. There's a smash. That's going to get up into... Um, center field on the ground and two wow. runs are going to score so wow. both 
Both runs were able to cross the plate. Polk Foster standing at first base with a single and two outs. Wow, I did not expect that outfield single to bring in two runs. Way to get two RBIs, Pokey. First one, the bender. Oh, off the glove. But they get him at first to close out the side. Off the glove of the pitcher. Wow, that was close. So the B-Wolves pick up two runs on three hits. We're going to go into the bottom of the second. Jacques Oftan, Stefan Ballard, and Guadalupe Pennington going to face Bender, who threw 13 pitches and had two strikeouts in the first inning. His ERA's down to 5.27. Jacques Oftan is 194 on the season, one home run, five RBIs. He's got power against right-handers. Ooh, wow, and he hits a murder ball foul on the first baseline. Oh, on the count. He's also got bad jumps if he gets on. Bender throwing his 15th pitch, swinging a miss. Strike two. He puts some movement on that after that contact with that first pitch. There's one down the left field line. Bertha Banks gets it fair, whips it to first. Oh, she oh. couldn't quite get him. Oh, it was a huge dive by Bertha, who threw it as hard as she could. But it was just too far to get end to end. That brings in the pitcher, Stefan Ballard, 369. Four home runs. No, this is not the pitcher, is he? No. No, I'm sorry. He's the left fielder. Fouled back off the net. Four home runs, 12 RBIs. Quick runner at first base with bad jumps. There's a hard oh, on, fly Pete. ball in the left field. That's going to be Dexterous picking it up, throwing it in, and the, the run's going to come home. And they're going to get one to make it 2-1. And Pete's upset with himself. <laughs> but Guadalupe Pennington in now. The shortstop, swing and miss, strike one. She's hitting 349, two home runs, 15 RBIs. She's got a runner at second base. She fouls that one off. She's quickly 0-2, but this is where the problems happen. Oh, that one goes outside. Check swing. 1-2 count to Pennington. Fouls that one back off the net. Hurley Bender with Thorne's 23rd pitch. Hard hit to Freddie Knox, who picks that one up off the ground on his way to first. Get that first out. The runner advances to third. And that brings in Pants Number Delgado. 52. 329 on the season. Three home runs, 12 RBIs. Fans hoping he could tie this game up. Breaking pitch misses the first one there. 1 0 the count to Pants. Hard liner foul of first baseline. We're even at one apiece with one out. Bottom of the second. Swing and a miss. Strike two, one and two. Could Bender put him away? Or are they going to have to throw home? Fouls that one back off the net near his guy in the batter's box. Still one and two. Swing it to a strike three. He gets another K. Dropping his pants. <laughs> and uh, two outs. Now we got Messiah French. Just one more. Messiah French, 23, three home runs, 13 RBIs. Good contact hitter. First pitch in there for a strike. Not a lot of power. Check swing strike two. Bender goes right at him with two quick strikes. 0 oh 2. 30 pitches under his belt. 31 foul back off of the wall. Still 0 oh 2 to Messiah French. There's a line past the mound and that gets into center field. That's going to be the tying run. And it is now 2-2 two two as French makes his way to first base. Boy, you know, we get those two strikes and then it all unravels, you know? Caesar Austin now, the, the pitcher. 167 on the season. Not a bad contact hitter for a pitcher. First pitch misses high. Hurley been now 33 pitches in the second inning. There's a strike. One and one. Two outs. Fast runner at first. One and two. Can they hold it together? Is he going to get a single here? Oh, misses outside. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Goes to first. Kick right down. Hurley's going rapid fire tonight. He's not waiting much time between pitches. There he goes to another strikeout. This is fourth of the night, I think. Yeah, but he gives up two runs on three hits. Hanley Dexter is 0 for 1. Buster Briggs 0 for 1. Sturdy Woodman 0 for 1. She's at 29 pitches, giving up three hits as the area's up to 196 as we head into the top of the third. Hanley Dexter is on fire and well. He's 0 for 1 today, though. Caesar Austin, known as the K-Man. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike now to Upstairs. That's fouled off along the first baseline. One ball, two strikes. Dexter is known as a tough out against Caesar oh. Austin, known as a K man. The catcher, that's popped up in foul territory just off of the foul line for the first out. Chalk off to make this catch, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, Buster Biggs now for one on the night. First pitch is a breaker. Misses low. One and only count to Buster Biggs. That one makes it in for a strike. We're going to want a piece. Top of the third. Safety off for Buster. 
hard liner on the ground, but it's too hard for Pennington to pick it up on the catch. And Buster's going to get in there with a nice single. Way to go, Buster. All right, so one on with a one out, and in steps Sturdy Woodman. He's neutral and fit. 0 for 1 today. Buster Biggs at first base with one out. First pitch to Woodman's inside, ball one. Oh. That one's popped up into center field, right center. And center fielder Pineda's there to make the catch for the second out. So two outs with a runner at first base. Come on, Steve must for power against right hand. There's one more on the single. Boy, it'd be nice to see Steve take one out and put us back up in front, too. The pressure up. He's one for one of the night, as I said. First one's right in it for strike. Comes right at him, this Caesar Austin. 40th pitch by Austin. It's a floater up high, misses. And no account. There goes Buster Biggs for second. The throw gets in there. Way to go, Buster. Now, Buster's in scoring position now. Two and one to Steve Monster. Two outs. Second strike. Two, two, two. What's going to happen here? Caesar Austin throws high and inside. Misses ball three. We've got a full count. Three and two with two outs. Top of the third. The bender makes it back in. That's going to get into center field. And Buster Biggs is coming around for home. And he's going to score the go-ahead run, Pete. The Beagles get the lead back. 3-2. All right, and in steps Freddie Knox, the second baseman. He's neutral and fit. One for one with a single. Steve Montstor standing at first base with two outs. First pitch to <laughs> Freddie Knox fouled off straight back. Strike one. That one's high ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs. Austin tense now. There's a roller to the shortstop. Bennington's going to oh. pick it up and just get... Freddie Knox at first base for the third out. But the B-Wolves pick up one run on two hits, making it 3-2 B-Wolves as we head into the bottom of the third. Dunk Pineda 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Carlita Salas 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And Montonio Labo 0 for 1. Bender threw 37 pitches with four strikeouts. Dunk Pineda's locked in and fit. He's 0 for 1 today. Struck out his first time up. All right. Oh. Allen's ripped foul along the third baseline into the stands. Look out, everybody. <laughs> Allen's outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. No outs in the bottom of the third. That's a roller foul along the third baseline. So now Pineda is behind in the count, one and two. And a swing and a miss, and Pineda goes down <laughs> for the second time on strikes. I don't know how long he can stay locked in. Carlito Salas, neutral and juiced. He's got bad jumps. He's 0 for 1 today. He uh, struck out his first time up as well. That one's popped up into uh, foul territory along the right field line. It's going to be oh. into the stands, unfortunately. Strike one. No balls, one strike with one out. Base is empty for Salas. Salas. <laughs> That one's outside, ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. That's ripped foul into the dugout along the first baseline. Salas now behind in the count, one and two. Bender delivers. Oh, just inside, ball two. It looked like he wanted to go, but he was able to hold off. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Swing and a miss. Salas goes down for the second time. That's six, Tommy. Wow. Six Ks. Montonio Levo, the first baseman's locked in and fit. He's 0 for 1 today. I believe he ground out to, uh, I think it was Bertha Banks in the first inning. So Something two up, like two that. down. Yeah. First pitch to Levo's inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Fooled him completely with that pitch, and it's in there for called strikes. So it's one and one now to Levo. There's a roller foul along the first baseline. One ball, two strikes, two outs, bases empty. That one's outside, ball two. Count is evened up, two and two. Levo, the first baseman, pops that one into left field. Buster Biggs is there to make the catch. <laughs> he kind of, I think he lost it in the sun or something. Well, it's, there's no sun, it must have been a light. So going into the top of the fourth, it's B-Wolves three runs on five hits. Goldcoats two runs on three hits. Bertha Banks first at bat. Ham Slamis 0 for 1. Pope Foster 1 for 1. Third baseman, Bertha, Bertha Banks, the third baseman's neutral and fit. Hitting 282 with a home run, six RBI. She sacrificed, bunted her first time up. She did. Oh, she Pete. pops that one up. That's an easy floater to right field. Waving that off to right fielder, and he catches it. Solid for the first time. All right. One down. Ham Slamis the short. He's 0 for, they hit 344 with a home run and then come on. 
something going. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. That one's outside. So the count is even up one and one. There's a smash. Come on, get out of here. Ham slams with a long fly ball. <laughs> oh, just on the warning track, but in foul territory. Just to rub salt in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Poke two outs now. Poke Foster, one for one with a single. Poke doing a good job. That one makes the outside corner strike one. Oh, what a count. That one misses nearby ball. One apiece. Bender makes it in there. That's one and two. 55th pitch coming up from Caesar Austin right here. He's hoping to close things up. Oh, and he gets the K. Poke swings early. Fools him with the changeup. Yep. So we're heading into the bottom of the fourth. It's still 3-2 B-Wolves. So Jacques off town, one for one. Stefan Ballard, one for one with a double. And Guadalupe Pennington, 0 for one. Bender at 51 pitches with six strikeouts. Giving up three hits. His ERA is at a 5.44. Oh, 10. <laughs> off 10, one for one with a single power hitter. The off field's going deep. After this, we're going to go to the Daimyo Japanese Steakhouse up there in left field. <laughs> Get us some tempura. Oh, that first slider makes it right in there. Oh, on the count. Bottom of the fourth inning. 3 2 B Wolves. Hurley Bender closing in on 55 pitches. This next one is 53rd. Gets a signal from Monster. Winds and throws. Swinging him at strike two. He's got two quick strikes. But we were having trouble here recently. Files that one back off the net on the curveball. Still on two to Jacques off 10. 55th pitch fouled. Third baseline. Still 0 and 2. Boy, they're really making Hurley throw. Swing and a miss, strike three. Nice cut finger outside. and uh, Or split finger. That's his, what, seventh K of the day, I believe, right? Yep. Stefan Ballard, one for one. Crowd standing up, cheering his name. Some B Wolves fans here, they're cheering back. <laughs> but it's mostly mostly Gold Coat fans here. That one fouled back off the net. Oh, one of the count to Stefan Ballard. Good contact hitter, left hand batter's box. That one sails outside. We're knotted up at one apiece of one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Almost to the halfway mark in the game. Inside jams him. That's going to be foul, but can Busker Biggs get there? He Catches it right off the turf. Just misses it. Foul ball. One and two the count. Stephen Ballard. Hard liner on the ground to Freddie Knox. He picks that up. It's going to be an easy one pump throw to first. Two down. Now that brings in Guadalupe Pennington, the locked in Guadalupe. She's 0 for 1 on the day. She's a little, just slightly above average when she's locked in. First pitch by Bender misses high. One no the count. Two outs. Bottom of the fourth. Fouls that breaking pitch off first baseline. Now we're even at one apiece. One and one. Foul ball off the net. Now she's behind one and two. Hurley Bender needs one more. Number 50 winds up tosses. Breaking pitch foul off the net again. Still one and two. 65th pitch by Hurley Bender. It's a low pitch popped up in the shallow left field. Ham Slamis going back. Hurley waves it off, but Ham Slamis ends up catching it for the third out. Yep, so we're going to head into the top of the fifth. It's still 3-2 B-Wolves. Hurley Bender 0 for 1. Hanley Dexter's 0 for 2. And Buster Biggs 1 for 2. Austin at 55 pitches with a strikeout. Going up 5 hits. His ERA's jumped up to a 2.08. Hurley yeah, Bender is locked in and fit. He's 0 for 1 today, hitting 333 on the season. Hurley's got some power. He could take one out. He could. <laughs> Filed that one off for a called strike. Strike one. Oh, swing and a miss, strike two, and Caesar Austin's out in front, 0-2. Oh, oh. That catches the outside corner for a call, third strike. That's Austin's second K of the day. Well, he, he brings them in quick. They really come in quick. Hanley Dexter is 0-2. Uh, lock, still locked in. Not on fire, but locked in. Hard foul ball liner, first baseline, 0-1 the count. Hanley swinging for the fences. That one misses outside. Good patience. What a piece. He's a veteran. He's not going to swing at that either. 2-1. Hanley's got good eyes today. Three quick balls. 3-1. and one. He's going to walk him. Hater's pitch. Oh, a little Texas leaguer in the left field that's going to drop in there. It's three between the shortstop left fielder and center fielder. Hanley makes it to first base. He's back on fire again, Pete. Yes, sir. So one out with one on and Buster Biggs. The left fielder steps in. He's one for two with a single. Throw over to first to keep Dexteris closed, but Dexteris is able to get back. First pitch to Biggs is ripped foul along the first baseline out of play. Strike one. That one's low ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. 
There's a smash. That's going to go wow. out. Gone. All right. Buster Biggs <laughs> with the home run. Two run shot to left field. Right 445 field. feet. That's Biggs' fifth home run and ninth RBI of the season. Looks like maybe Biggs is starting to get it going here, Tom. All right. Way to go, Big Z. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's always good to see the long ball. Sturdy Woodman 0 for 2. Now the Beatles have a 5-2 lead here at the halfway mark. Top of fifth inning. Oh, Pete. He swings and pops that one up behind home plate. The ump has to look for it, and Shockoff 10 pulls that in for the second out. <coughs> two outs. Steve Monstewer, the catcher, stepping in. He's having a day. Two for two <coughs> singles and an RBI. He's got power versus right-handed pitcher. Oh. First pitch swing and a miss. Strike one. That one's outside, ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs. That one's low ball two. Two and one now to Steve Monstor, the catcher. Inside. That one's inside. Three and one. Cesar Austin. That's a shot. <laughs> and oh, Montonio Leva with a diving catch for the third out. But the Beatles put two more on the board, making it 5 2 as we head into the bottom of the fifth. Pants Delgado 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Messiah French 1 for 1 and Caesar Austin 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Bender at 65 pitches with 7 now strikeouts. Pants Delgado tense but fit. Delgado playing second base for the Gold Coats. Delgado hitting 324. Nope, no. First pitch is low, ball 1. Nope, that one's low, ball oh, inside, ball 2. Two balls and no strikes to Pants Delgado. There's a roller to Freddie Knox. He's going to pick that up, make the throw to Sturdy Woodman for the first out. One down and in steps Messiah French, the third baseman. He's neutral and fit. One for one with a single and an RBI. Base is empty for French. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And Bender just overpowered him there. So no balls, one strike with one out. There's a roller, but that's going to go foul along the third baseline. So now French finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with an out. Oh, just a little high. Ball one. One and two now to Messiah French. Swing and a miss, and Messiah French goes down on strikes. Make it number eight for Hurley Bender. Caesar Austin, the pitcher, he's neutral and fit, known as a K-man. He's 0 for 1 today, and he's hitting 154 on the season. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth. The bases are empty for Caesar Austin. That one's popped up in foul territory, and oh, Sturdy <laughs> Woodman may tried to get over there and make the catch, but he couldn't get there. No balls, one strike to Austin. Swing and a miss, strike two. And now Austin's in the hole, 0 and 2. Two outs. Bases empty in the bottom of the fifth. That one's outside, ball one. One ball and two strikes. B Wolves with a 5 2 lead. Swing and a miss, and Caesar Austin goes down on strikes, and that'll be nine, nine Ks. We're going into the top of the sixth inning. It's B Wolves five, Gold Coats two, Freddie Knox one for two, Bertha Banks 0 for one, and Ham Slam is 0 for two. Caesar Austin at 72 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up seven hits. His ERA's jumped up to a 2.44. Freddie Knox is one for two today with a single. He is. Caesar Austin, uh, 73rd pitch to start off the sixth inning. It's right in for strike. Oh, the count. Safety off for Freddie Knox. Hard foul back up the wall. Quickly, he's 0-2. Facing a K-man. 75th pitch by Austin. And this is just a good patience there. Freddie, 1-2. and two. That one's right in his wheelhouse. A little slower. He fouled it back off third baseline. Reaches down. Hits a roller. It's a comebacker that he can't pick up. He throws to first. Knox beats it out. Only Freddie Knox can run out that. It was a potentially a swinging bunt, and uh, yeah, Austin couldn't pick it back up. No, sir. Bertha Banks steps in. She's 0 for 1 today. No outs. Freddie Knox standing at first base. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Strike one. That's fouled off on a hit and run. No balls, two strikes with no outs. Runner at first base. And he's off, and he's going to get thrown out. Oh, no. <laughs> Freddie Knox steals second base. So one out with a runner at second. Ham Slam is stepping in. Uh, Ham 0 for 2. He's got a runner in scoring, a fast runner in scoring position at second base with Freddie Knox. With just one out. 90 mile an hour pitch misses low. 1 0 the count. Caesar Austin. Gold Coast trying to get back in this game here. That's fouls out with a strike. We even one piece. Hard liner to deep center field. Uh oh, uh oh. Doug Panetta makes a catch. Freddie Knox has to come back, slide in. They get the double play. Dog gone. 
Ham's hitting the ball hard. It's just not hard enough. <laughs> Going into the bottom of the sixth, it's still 5 2 B Wolves. Mm -hmm. Double Pineda 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Carlito Salas 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And Montanio Levo 0 for 2. Dunkey 0 for 2. Locked in. Solid contact hitter. Right hand batter's box standing up tall. Number 39. The center fielder for the Gold Coast it's been the slider outside, but it misses. One over the count by Hurley Bender. 78th pitch. A little one on the ground to Ham Samus, who picks it up one bounce. Throw to first. One up, one down. And he did not like that. Carlos Salinas now. The neutral juiced 0 for 2. Uh, Sal Carlos Salas, I'm sorry, hitting 0 on the season. That's a quick little pop-up. And Sturdy Woodman... <laughs> Freddie Knox waved it over. Sturdy Woodman came up and grabbed that for, for the out. And two quick outs. And up comes Montonio Labo, who's over two. I feel it's going to go deep because he's got some power and he's locked in. Slider makes it up top in there for a strike on one of the count. Evil's in command today. Oh, switch to the bad pitch low and inside. And he's down in a hole, 0 and 2. Sturdy, or uh, Hurley Bender at 81 pitches, 82nd pitch. Swinging with strike three. It's his 10th K of the night. Wow, what an inning for Sturdy, for Hurley. For somebody. Yes, sir. So we're going into the top of the seventh. B Wolves, five runs on eight hits. Gold Coach, two runs on three hits. Poke Foster, one for two in the strikeout. Hurley Bender, 0 for two in the strikeout. Henley Dexter is one for three. Austin at 83 pitches with three strikeouts, giving up five hits. Or eight hits. Poke Foster, neutral and fit, one for two with a single and two RBIs. First pitch is in it for a called strike. Strike one. One's inside, ball one. One ball and one strike to Pope Foster. That one's ripped foul into the stands along the third baseline. One ball, two strikes, no outs to Pope Foster. There's a roller to the shortstop Pennington. She'll pick it up, make the throw to first for the first out. One down, and then steps Hurley Bender, the pitcher. Hurley Bender 0 for 2, 316. Oh, and there goes Caesar Austin. They're going to they're gonna pull him here in the top of the seventh. Uh, Philippe McGee. Philippe McGee is a relief pitcher, number 90. He's got a 2.81 ERA, a 1.17 whip, and 29 strikeouts of the season. Philippe rocking the handlebar mustache. He's locked in, known mostly for his velocity and his body average accuracy. He's almost 100% rested. He's a composed pitcher. He throws a four-finger to a two-finger, and he changes things up with the slider and the curveball. So he's, he's a solid reliever, left-hand pitcher. Stand-up delivery. First pitch is in there for a strike. He goes right at Hurley. Two quick strikes. He's got a mo two. He's going to go for the three-pitch strikeout. Pop-up. Broken bat into shallow center field. Second baseman runs over to grab it. And that's going to be caught by Delgado for the second out. The center fielder. Two outs. Hanley Dexteris on fire and well is one for three with a single. He's known as a tough player on the league. Two outs with the in the seventh. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Strikes. That one's Fouled along the third baseline. One ball, one strike with two outs. Hmm. That one's fouled, fouled off as well. One and two. Dexter is known as a tough out. That one's outside. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs to Hanley Dexter as he fouls that one off. <laughs> he fouls that one off. <laughs> Dexter is making him throw some pitches here. That one's popped up into shallow center field. And the shortstop, Pennington's there to make the catch for the third out. But Dexter's got him to throw some pitches. He's up to 10 pitches in that brief appearance. Yeah. So we're heading into the bottom of the seventh. It's 5-2 B-Wolves. Jacques off 10, 1 for 2 with a strikeout. Stefan Ballard, 1 for 2 with a double. And Guadalupe Pennington, 0 for 2. Bender at 82 pitches with 10 strikeouts. Jacques off 10. The catcher's neutral and fit. That power versus right-handed pitching is 1-2 with a single. Bender delivers outside ball one. Hurley Bender at 84 pitches. Oh, that one's high into the air, going back wow. into center field. That's a towering home run. There's no catch in that one. So Jacques off it again, Tom, <sighs> against the B-Wolves. He hits a towering 457-foot home run. It's his second of the season and his sixth RBI. And Hurley Bender. May have stayed one too many. <laughs> Stephon Ballard, the right fielder's neutral. Fitties one for two with a double and an RBI. Scores now 5 3 B Wolves in the bottom of the seventh. Nope, that's low. That one's low. Ball one. 
One ball and no strikes. Bender no longer locked in. He's neutral and fit. That's in there for called strike. One and one to Stefan Ballard, the Gold Coat left fielder. That one's a roller and Freddie knock. Oh, Freddie. It was a roller and it was a little bit out of Freddie Knox's reach, so he dove to get it, but he couldn't catch it. So uh, Stefan Ballard reaches first. Guadalupe Pennington's 0 for 2 today. She's playing shortstop for the Gold Coats. One on with no outs. She fouls that one straight back. Strike one. Inside. That one was inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike with no outs. Swing and a miss. And Guadalupe Pennington in, uh, behind in the count. One and two. There's a shot, but foul along the first baseline. One and two. Fender delivering his 92nd pitch right here. Uh -huh. And it's a low ball, two. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. Runner at first base in the bottom of the seventh. Beewolves with a two run lead. That one's fouled straight back. Two and two. Uh -huh. That one's low ball, three. Now you got a full count to Guadalupe Pennington. Three balls, two strikes, throw over to first. Ballard is back. So three balls, two strikes, no outs to Guadalupe Pennington. That's in there for called third strike. Pennington <laughs> watched it go by. So one out and in steps Pants Delgado. He's tense but fit. He's 0 for 2 today. Actually, they're going to go Delgado. They're going to bring in Chevelle Stewart to pinch hit. He's got a 342 batting average. No home runs, three RBA, RBIs. He's neutral and fit. He's got very. He's got good power. But he's got poor contact and poor speed on the base pass. He's got good connection versus which won't help him against Bender. So in to pinch hit for Chevelle Stewart. He takes the first pitch inside ball one. That's in there for called strike one and one. And Bender's velocity is starting to show some wear now. That one's fouled off. And now Chevelle Stewart is behind. That one's popped up into center field. Haley Dexterra is, is there. He makes the catch for the second out and he throws it in to second base. And uh, I can't remember the name of the guy at first. It was back. back. Messiah French, the third baseman's up. Messiah French is going to be pulled here as well. They're going to bring in Haley Hooper, uh, the right fitting pinch hitter. Uh, Hooper hitting 289 in the season with three home runs, nine RBI. She's tense but fit. She's got better than average power, less than average contact, and about average speed on the base pass, but she does have power versus right handed pitching. So in for French, Haley Hooper. Hurley Bender at 99 pitches, showing wear all over. That's a roller to Freddie Knox. He'll pick it up, make the throw to Woodman for the third out. So. All right, we got out of danger there. We're going to head into the top of the eighth. It's 5-3 B-Wolves. Buster B home runs 30. Woodman 0 for 3. And Steve Munster 2 for 3. Philippe McGee has thrown 10 pitches. His ERA is at 2.73. Buster Biggs is locked in and fit. He's 2 for 3 with a home run, single, and two RBIs. Who out of position is Stewart at uh, second base? Hard liner. Uh, that's that's out of here. Over the right field wall. Buster Biggs. Oh, off the wall. He's he's stuck at first base. <laughs> he thought that was a home run. That was a Sturdy great... Woodman, the first baseman's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 3 today. Buster Biggs at first base with a long single. And again, can't buy a break. Just <laughs> off the top of the wall. <laughs> first pitch is in uh, inside ball one. That one's lifted into the stands along the first baseline out of play. One ball, one strike with no outs. The sturdy Woodman, that's a shot straight up the middle in the center field for a clean single for Woodman. So runners at first and second now with no outs. And in step Steve Monstour. The monster. Pressure way up. Two for three, two singles and an RBI. Things looking good here for the Beagles. Got a chance to push even further ahead. He got a fast runner at second base. That bending pitch misses inside. One no the count. The composed Philippe McGee comes right at him. Hits a liner into center field, but Pineda catches that for the first out. Everyone. Has to come Dang back. It. It's only the first out. Dag nabbit. Freddie Knox, the second baseman's neutral and fit two for three with two singles. Yeah, but he was right on that one. Too far right to the center fielder. 
First pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Runners at first and second with one out. That one's outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Freddie Knox. That's in there for called strike. Two and one. That's lifted foul along the third baseline. Count is evened up now. Two balls, two strikes with one out. That one's high. Three and two, the composed pitcher now with a full count. Three and two, and he walks Freddie Knox and walks the bases loaded. The bases are now loaded with one out. Bertha Banks steps in. The tenth Bertha Banks 0 for 2, um, and they're not going with Ruby Green. They're going to keep her in there. First pitch, low, ball one, one of the count. Pressure way up. Hard hit to deep center field. It's going back, and Pineda's going to make that catch, but it's, it's, it's deep enough for the runner to make it, Pete. Tag up and run, and Bertha Banks gets the RBI on the sack fly. Short I cannot buy a break. Ham Slamis to shortstop neutral and fit 0 for 3 today. But he's hitting 324 in the season. Runners at first and second with two outs. Come on, Ham, let's get something going here, buddy. Uh, line drive to second baseman Stewart, who makes the catch for the third out. So we're heading into the bottom of the eighth. It's 6 3 B Wolves. Philippe McGee's first at back. Dunk, Dunk Pineda 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Carlito Salas 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Bender at 100 pitches with 11 strikeouts, giving up five hits. Philippe McGee, the relief pitcher, is neutral and fit composed. He's got no batting average. McGee's going to have a seat. They're going to bring in Flack Jack Noble, center fielder. It's a. Uh, um, yeah, they're just switching things up like crazy. You're trying to get back in this. Flapjack's hitting 258 with one home run, three RBS in the season. Good power, power hitter, and he's fast. And the B Wolves. Uh, are yeah, they're gonna give they're gonna give hand the towel to Bender. He's pitched 100 pitches, thrown well for seven innings. And here in the bottom of the eighth, they're gonna go with relief pitcher Case Barajas. <laughs> Case Barajas. Known for his velocity, throws it real hard, and he's accurate. Uh, not a whole lot of junk. He throws a four-finger fastball, and he misses, mixes things up with the slider and the changeup. Nice little work for there by Case, who's been playing well recently. He's whittled his ERA down to an 11.77, which is not a good ERA, but considering where he started, it's much better. First pitch is in there for a strike over the count to Flapjack Noble. Second pitch is a little roll around the ground to Freddie Knox, who walks over, picks it up, throws it to first, he gets that first out. Dunk Pineda 0 for 3 on the day. Uh, Golden Coats fans starting to get a little frustrated. They're cheering on Dunk. Dunk. It's Dunk! <laughs> it's no longer uh, Al. It's Dunk, if you know that reference. Second pitch is a strike. Swing and a miss. 0-2 the count with one out. Goes right up with his fifth pitch. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. It's K's. Braha's first K. Two down. And now that brings in the tenth, but juiced. Uh, Carlito Salas, who's 0 for 3 on the evening. The fans cheered him on, hoping something could happen. Check swing, but it's in for a strike. Oh, look out. Case Bras looking good, number 20. Goes right at him. There's a little liner to Bertha Banks, who grabs that out of the air for the third out. Wow, it's a, it's a commanding lead going to the ninth inning. Yes, sir. The new pitcher, Flapjack, uh, Flapjack Noel, is going to take a seat, and they're going to bring in Binky Stevens. Binky Stevens has a 4.80 ERA, a 1.13 whip, 14 strikeouts on the season. He's neutral and fit. He's got less than average velocity. He's got poor junk, but he's got uh, good accuracy. He's not fully rested, but he's almost fully rested. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, and a fork ball. So as we head into the top of the ninth, it's b Wolves 6, Gold Coach 3. Poke Foster one for three with a strikeout. Case Barajas is first at bat, and Hanley Dexter is one for four. Binky Stevens with a 4.80 ERA. Yeah, I probably should have done a double switch there and changed the pitcher so that Poke Foster, the right fielder, one for three with a single and two RBIs. I just noticed all the umpires are ladies today. There's a hard liner in the center field, making it. Doug Pineda picks that one up, throws it into the second base. He gets on with a single on the first pitch. Yes, sir, and in steps Case Barajas. He's neutral and fit. Not a lot of, no power, no contact, but he's got good speed. He is hitting 500 with one RBI, though. First pitch is high, ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's a shot, and that's going to be caught by Pennington, and Polk Foster's going to stay on the base. So one out and a runner at first. That brings in the locked-in hand that extras one for four with a single. His batting average is slumped all the way down to 471. Hard line in the center field. That's going to be caught Dag right in the it. glove of Pineda for the second out. 
two outs. Pope Foster still at first base. Gosh darn it. He led off with a single. Buster Biggs locked in and fit. Three for four. A home run. Two singles. Three eyes. And he bounced one off the top of the wall. <laughs> Come on, Biggs. Let's do something. First side ball one. One ball, no strikes to Buster Biggs. Oh. That one's popped up on the infield. The catcher's out. Calls everybody up and off, then makes the catch for the third out. So we're going into the bottom of the ninth. B-Wolves with a uh, six runs on 11 hits. Gold Coach, three runs on five hits. Montonio Levo, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Yakov, 10, 2 for 3 with a home run and a strikeout. Stefan Ballard, 2 for 3 with a double. Case Farajas threw seven pitches. And strikeout. Montonio Levo is locked in and fit. Like I said, he's 0 for 3. Case Farajas is allergic to the Gold Coats. <laughs> Gives out a big sneeze there. So the first pitch to Levo is popped up behind home plate, out of play. Strike one. That one's fouled off as well, straight back. No balls, two strikes, no outs. Levo in the hole. That one's low, ball one. One ball and two strikes now to Montonio Levo. Oh, just outside, ball two. The count is evened up, two and two. That's fouled straight back. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. Base is empty for Levo. Inside. Oh, inside, <laughs> ball three. Now you got a full count. Three balls, two strikes, no outs. Ross delivers, and there's a roller. Oh, dang it. And it's another freaking <laughs> ground ball that couldn't be fielded for some reason. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand that. So it was a ground ball to Sturdy Woodman, who he couldn't field it, so it rolls into right field for a single. So, outs and in steps Jacques Tan. He's going to roll that one down. Uh, nope. Yeah. Uh oh. The left fielder, number 18. All right. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, what happened? <laughs> I just lost my mic. I don't know what happened there, but. It was a roller to uh, double play, but again, didn't pick up the ball and couldn't <laughs> couldn't get himself <laughs> gathered enough to flip it to second. So runners now at first and second with no outs. Two quick strikes to Stefan Ballard. Nope, no. That one's low ball one. One ball and two strikes to Stefan Ballard. And there's a roller, and that's going to get to a uh, slam. Oh, God bless it. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is like the death by a. It's a roller, but it's far away. Ham Slamis has to dive to get it. He gets it, but he beat and make a throw. So <laughs> this is three infield singles now that have loaded the bases for the Gold Coats. Pennington has fouled that one off. No balls, one strike with no outs. Inside ball one. We're trying to help Case Barajas out, and this is not how you do it. One ball, one strike. There's a roller foul. One ball, two strikes to Guadalupe Pennington, the shortstop. No outs with the bases loaded. There's a roller, and that's going to get to Freddie Knox, and they're going to get two. So Knox flips it to Ham Slamis. Ham Slamis to Sturdy Woodman for two. Unfortunately, a run does score, making it six to four. And there's a runner at third base. In steps Chevelle Stewart, who's playing second base for the Gold Coats. There's a shot, and that's going to get into right field. That'll score another run, making it six to five. Six to five. Haley Hooper, tense but fit. She's got power versus. She's 0 for 1. And yeah, for all the stuff we did, Case Barajas' ERA is going back up. Strike, strike one. Oh, no balls, it? one strike, two outs. Runner at first base. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Haley Hooper now in the hole. 0-2 oh with two outs. Inside. That one's inside ball one. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Now it's fouled straight back. One and two with two outs. Runner at first base. Score is 6-5 now. There's a roller. <laughs> And Case Barajas gets it, throws it to first, and that'll end the game. Wow. <laughs> and Mike. <laughs> well, the Beatles win. I'll, I'll cover I'll take it from here. Uh, Pete had to go to the bathroom. So, it is. Uh, yeah, the Beatles score first, top of the first inning, they get two runs. 
Uh, the Gold Colts come back, tie it right up. Bottom of the second, they get two runs. Beagles get the lead back right away in the third, 3-2. And then they score two more in the fifth of a nice uh, two-run home run, I think by Buster Biggs. Uh, they hold the lead till the seventh. Uh, the Gold Colts get one to make it interesting. Beagles get one more right back in the eighth. Then the Gold Colts put two on the board in the bottom of the ninth, making it within one, and then it ends that way. The Beagles win it six runs on 11 hits to the Gold Colts five runs on nine hits. Yes, sir. That was some ending. <laughs> uh, Hadley Dexteris goes only one for five on the day, crosses the plate once. Uh, Buster Biggs was three for five. Buster Biggs showing up. It gets a home run, two RBIs. Sturdy Woodman, one for four. Uh, Steve Mastura, two for four. He has a good day. He gets an RBI himself as well. Freddie Knox comes in, goes two for three with an RBI. Uh, crosses the plate once. And then, yeah, Banks 0 for two. Only 0 for two. How did she only bat twice? Uh, the sacrifice bunt doesn't count as an at-bat. Oh, at okay, right, and then, um, did she walk? Uh, Once? No. No, she didn't. Yeah. So, so I'm not sure. What, I, mean, well, I would have thought she would have been 0, uh, 0 for 3, I would have thought. Yeah. Well, maybe, they consider, maybe they consider the uh, one of them uh, a fielder's choice. Oh, okay. Slam is 0 for 4. Foster, 2 for 4. Way to come yeah, in. He's not and doing two well. And who? Slam is? Yeah, he's oh, not doing well. I thought you were talking about Foster. I said, Foster, two for four. Yeah, yeah he's two yeah. for four. <laughs> Gets two RBIs, uh, K's once. Yeah. Bender, 0 for three. Uh, but, you know, not expecting much of a really strikeout. And uh, right. Baraja, so forth. Yep, yeah, and then over there for the Gold Coats, there's a long list of... Uh, <laughs> uh, Doug Pineda came in. He was on fire, he was, uh, or at least locked in. He goes 0 for four with three strikeouts. Carlito Salas, he goes 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. I mean, we talked about, I mentioned at the beginning that, uh, like, the first three batters were all, like, you know, locked in. They were locked yeah. in, and yet, you know, Bender just chewed them up and spit them out. Le Levo went 1 for 4, scored one run, and he struck out once. Uh, Jacques Oftan, as we pointed out, you know, 3 for 4 against us. Yeah. Scored three runs. He had a home run, uh, one RBI, and he struck out once. Uh, Stefan Ballard, he goes three for four, scored a run, uh, and had an RBI. I think those are the two best hitters on the on the uh, Gold Coats. Pennington, 0 for four. Delgado came in, he went 0 for two. Stewart came in, he was one for two, and French was one for two. So um, you know, we got two for four out of the two of them. Yeah. Everybody else, uh, Hooper, Austin, um, they they were 0 for two, and then of course, well, Austin's the pitcher, so you didn't really expect much of them. You get McGee, Noble, and Stevens, and they were all uh, McGee and Stevens didn't even bat, but Noble got a shot, and he was 0 for one. So, yeah, not not a lot of hitting over there. Yeah, there's really only two players combined. The subs went one for five. Pitching, Hurley Bender comes in, gets the win. He throws seven innings, uh, gives him five hits, three earned runs, eleven more strikeouts. He's just just unstoppable. Gives up one home run. His ERA is at a 5.18. Now he's got a winning record, 3-2 and two on the season. And Case Barajas comes in, pitches well, goes two innings, gives up four hits, two earned runs, uh, gets 1K, but he gets the save. So his ERA drops to an 11.4, and he's now 1-3-3 three and three on the season. Yep, and then the goal coach, uh, Cesar Austin, comes in. He pitched six, uh, six and a third innings, gave up eight hits, five earned runs, three strikeouts, had a, gave up one home run. His ERA jumps up to 2.36, and his record falls to two and four. Uh, McGee came in, pitched an inning and two thirds. He gave up two hits and an earned run, walked one. His ERA is at 2.96, and his record will remain 2 0 and 0. And then uh, Binky Stevens finished it off. He pitched an inning, gave up a hit. His ERA is at 4.5, and his record will remain 2 0 and 0. The first star of the game, Buster Biggs, the left fielder, three for five with the home run, two RBI, scored three runs, and he stole a base. Jacques Offten, the B-plus ranked catcher for the uh, the Gold Coats, comes in, does it well this season. Number 23 goes three for four with a home run, an RBI, and three runs. And then Hurley Bender pitched uh, the third star of the game. He pitched seven innings, gave up five hits, three earned runs, and uh, 11 strikeouts. First time we haven't seen her, uh, Hanley Dexteris up there for a while. Yeah. yeah. 
Tommy G with four yeah. hits, one home run, four RBIs, one great catch, one stolen base, seven strikeouts, a contribution of 50%. Pete J with seven hits, no home runs, two RBIs, one great catch, one stolen base, five strikeouts, and a contribution of 50%. There you go. Well, I'm hitting better. At least I'm hitting better. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not hitting better. I'm, I'm hitting the ball more, which is better. But, I, God, I cannot buy a home run to save my life. <laughs> Well, that's sad. If you say, Pete, hit a home run and you, it will save your life, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> I'd be dead. I'd be dead right now. <laughs> All right, let, me, let me finish my will. Yeah. Uh, hey, we'll even let you hit it from halfway deep halfway deep in, this, in the outfield. I still couldn't do it. <laughs> still be dead. Uh, we could do. <laughs> I don't know. Just just keep trying to hit. I mean, I'm hitting the ball more, which is good. It means I'm... I'm, I'm I'm getting a little bit better. Hopefully, it'll it'll just start to come. But oh, God, deep in the last outfield. two games, last two games, I hit I hit a hard ball. It just bounced off the top of the wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was yeah. Just two feet from clearing it. Yeah. Oh Jeez. Like, well, yeah. Come on. Well, give it. To me. Give it. To me. Just give it. To me. <laughs> we're gonna go back home, man. We we just we just winning and winning and winning. Oh yeah. I gotta take a look at our at our uh, schedule to see. Well, when's the last game? Okay, we lost against the Moon Stars, and then we won one, two, three, four, five, six straight now. Yeah. Um, and do we start talking about possibly pitching, to raising? Yeah. yeah. Well, raising the whole thing. Oh. Going up to yeah. fifty-two, maybe. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, the last three games we won by one run. Yeah. That's the thing that keeps you, you know, kind of holds you back, is it's not like we're rolling over teams. Right, right. And yeah. it, they're tight games. They are very tight games. Yeah. Um, I mean, even this one wound up being a tight game in the end. Yeah. Which aggravated me, too, because how do you... Three infield singles? Come on. Come, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, well, yeah, we, we go up an, another difficulty level. All right, well, then we'll, we'll do that for the next game. We'll be home against okay. the... The Detroit Heaters for the first, the only meeting. No, no, second meeting. We, we played them out in Detroit before they beat us 5-3 earlier. Um, so we're going to finish up against them here in game 26. It's going to be a repeat. Ortiz against Fuller. So it's a total rematch. But it's in our park, so. So there you go. Very cool. All right. Cool. We well, got some news. You want to do oh, news? Do, yeah, yeah. I didn't, even, I didn't even take a look at news. Wait, wait, let's see. We got to go down. There's, yeah, there's some stuff going on. All right, you start us off. All right. Uh, um, Marvin Steed offended oh. a blowfish coach and was replaced by Olaf Bierson. Marvin Steed, um, a 38-year-old left fielder outfielder with uh, power versus right-handed pitching and known around the league as a stealer, was making $11,600,000. He's going to be replaced by Olaf Bierson, who's a 27-year-old left fielder who's going to make $2,300,000. The uh, Blowfish are going to gain um, on power, but they're going to lose on uh, the ability to connect and speed on the base pass. They'll gain on fielding, though, and just uh, just uh, lose a little bit. Actually, it's kind of a push on the arm. So um, it's kind of a back and forth. You gain on power, you lose a little on contact and speed, but you gain on fielding. So you're going to have a better fielding left fielder. So, yeah, wow. Good luck to them with that. Good luck to Mr. Pearson. Yeah, and Mr. Good. Steed, learn to watch your mouth. Huh? Uh, uh, Steed, <laughs> Steed, he's been on. He's been a blowfish for. He's one of their their better players. So I'm kind of surprised to see that happen. Um, up from there, Hamilton Bellows lowered his asking salary. He's down. He's from fifteen two down to fourteen eight. Yeah, it's starting to drop precipitously now. Yeah. Um, last but not least, Jimmy Noggin has offended a blowfish coach and was replaced by Anya O'Neill. See, it was Noggin and Steed yeah. together making fun of one of the coaches, and yeah. they hurt somebody's <laughs> feeling. But Jimmy Noggin was uh, is a 38-year-old left fielder catcher. He was making $1,400,000. They're going to bring in Anya O'Neill. She's a 30-year-old first baseman. Um, she'll be making two million one hundred thousand uh, dollars. Nagan was a D minus, while uh, O'Neill is going to be a C plus. They're going to gain on power. They'll gain on a, the ability to connect. They will lose on speed, though, um, and they will also lose on fielding. So not a very good fielding first baseman, but they are going to gain on uh, arm. 
she's got a much stronger arm, so. Yeah, stronger, strong arm at first base, and yeah, she's a better hitter, so. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. All right. Well, then, uh, cool. Well, then there'll be nine games between now and when we get back home there uh, and uh, over there. So we'll uh, be over there. and <laughs> We will, yes, sir. <clears throat> we will see we will see you back in Phoenix. Until then, this is Tommy G. And this is BJ. And we're saying, get out of here.